It's my privilege to be able to work with many innovators and investors. And quite often they ask me either how to strategically present and develop their ideas or how to judge the potential of an investment opportunity. Now, there are many great models for either out there and, and I do not pretend to have the all singing, all dancing solution, but uh, I do have a model or indeed a process based on some almost 20 years of experience as a venture capitalist, advisor and entrepreneur in my own right, which has served me quite well and which I'm happy to share with you. I've had the honor to co-develop this as a practicing VC together with the late Professor Richard John Ortley and the amazing Professor Gerhard Plosonic in the early 2000s. And it built some previous work by Professor Gordon Edge, another key drivers of the so-called Cambridge phenomenon, with whom both Richard and Gerhard had previously successfully worked. The model is called Technology Bridge, and we first captured it in our joint book, Making Money Out of Technology. And I later refined it together with Richard in my book, Uptake Revisited. Typically, pretty much everybody I have encountered writes or evaluates a business plan and focuses on the people. And there is absolutely nothing wrong with this. Of course, we also consider these, but uh, how to put it, it's just that a lot of hope is uh, typically involved in these two dimensions and we simply prefer facts over hope, especially when it comes to the business plan. With the business plan, there usually is a hockey stick, which is correct. We've just found that one then often ends up stretching the timeline to accommodate it, which can turn into a rather costly affair. And to counter this, we've suggested the following five steps, initially focusing a bit more on technical and quantifiable questions. So in the first step, we believe one should, as an investor in an innovation, check and as a promoter of a novel concept, evidence positive ownership. What this means is, do you own it? Can you protect and defend it? Preferably, there is a suitable and valid patent protecting the innovation. But in some areas, such as software, this may not be possible. But there then are other ways. You could, for example, use the legendary Coca-Cola strategy in, uh, in the spirit of the saying that a secret, and that includes a trade secret, is something best kept by one person and one person only. Simply keep key elements confidential. Or you could build a really strong brand, saying Red Bull. Yes, there are today probably also yellow cow and green kangaroo offerings competing for the same market with a similar product. But the brand, enriched by strong marketing and unique and immediately recognizable packaging, has turned into a true love mark and, and lifestyle accessoire, what otherwise is just a fizzy drink. And uh, as a result, it seems to be simply untouchable in most markets. Well done, I say, right? Secondly, you got to be sure to have true positive advantages. Is it truly better than what is already available and does it offer commercial benefits? What I mean by that is that it has to be better by a significant factor, whatever that may be. Not just a little better, really better. Something like 10 times faster or cheaper. Why? Well, because it will take some time to get this to market and the advantage will still have to be outperforming and relevant by then, assuming that competition and incumbents won't stand still in the meantime. By the way, in the context of blockchain solutions, which is something I'm really passionate about, I usually ask the question of whether the proposed idea really solves the problem via blockchain technology as many solutions, to be honest, which I'm seeing today, could simply also be achieved by using a database or other means. Certainly, are potential buyers positive on this? 
For everything, there's a buyer. And it's your job to early identify and ask them. For any given developed industry, there are known key players, which will be crucial for B2B solutions. Usually when it comes to high tech, California is a pretty good bet. They have pioneered the tools of personal liberation from LSD to surfboards, PCs and iPhones. But for example, in the decentralized blockchain and crypto worlds, disruption as well as leadership is brought about from various and quite different places all around the world. So I'm afraid you will have got to go out and find those you need to talk to. Obviously, this is only relevant in the case of evolutionary innovation, as there at some point a trade sale or licensing, which by the way really is a sale stretched over time and potentially to more than one buyer, or at least a cooperation will become necessary or happen. If the innovation is truly disruptive, then I admit it makes little sense to talk to the incumbents as you would essentially, as we've previously established, be talking to zombies. And uh, as everybody who has ever seen a zombie movie will know, this usually doesn't end well. That being said, I've only seen very few truly disruptive ideas. And in all other instances, discussions will be essential, as they will, if done well, help you to develop the correct technical, commercial and strategic specifications you need to work towards. Step number four is then to establish positive returns. Now, this is essential to the business plan. Is it robust and is there a truly addressable market? A lot has changed since business plans have become all the rage in the 1980s as huge new markets have become accessible and the long tails of many established markets can be tapped into in this interconnected and globalized world we operate in today. But essentially, it always comes down to the question, will this make more money than it will cost to realize it? Step number five is then, are you positive on the deal? Will the right skills and enough money be available? Here the key question will be if you can put together the right team, also over time. Meaning, will you be able to grow and indeed, where necessary, change the team as the innovation will go through its development phases, which may very likely require a different mix. If you start your business with your friends, you may have to ask yourself if you will be able to fire them if they can't cut it as this grows. Sounds simple, but trust me, simple is never easy. If there is one key thought running through all of this, it clearly is for making money out of technology or ideas, facts, not hope, win. All of that being said, let's be very clear. Ultimately, it always comes down to Execution, execution, execution. But uh, I don't want to make it sound negative. Huh? There is nothing more exciting and indeed rewarding than despite all the hard work it involves to bring or help bring an innovation to life and to turn a dream into reality. It is the privilege of our generation to experience the unfolding of two truly transformative technologies, the internet and blockchain. And there's so much going on beyond that. Hey, even going backwards leads to new frontiers. My little son, a true digital native, considers vinyl records to be wildly cool. And through this, inspired me to get involved in, in business around this, which turned out to be most rewarding and profitable. Anyway, so I hope that Epitaph for Disruption does inspire you to embark on a journey of innovation and discovery and to keep on rocking in the free world.